The day they killed Daphne, I felt I needed to do something. Meet the candidates episode three with engineer Rebecca Chilia. I'm Rebecca Chilia. I'm a candidate for the Nationalist Party on the 7th and 11th districts. I'm an engineer by profession. <laughs> um, I'm also a law student. I'm in third year now. I worked for some time as a journalist as well. And I am quite new in the political sphere. Rebecca, what makes you proud to be Maltese? I think it's the fact that whenever we need to come together, we have come together as, as a whole country, um, even during COVID, um, even when there are um, people who need our help, like we saw with the uh, gatherings for Ukraine that they brought food. We, we always seem to come together in the time of need. And I think that's what makes us Maltese, the fact that we are different at times, but friends, family, we're close, we, we care about each other. And I think that's a very important aspect in society. In the next couple of years, which social issue merits more of our time and attention? I think it's, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but it is mental health. Um, especially with COVID, we've seen a lot of people, and I've spoken to a lot of people who didn't have any mental health issues, but because COVID has restricted us, has has closed us off, I think mental health has become even more of a priority. Um, I mean, even just mentioning my Nana, for example, she's, she's 88, going to be 89. She's still very vibrant. She loves going out. COVID was difficult because she had to stay in. She couldn't go out. I've spoken to a lot of uh, my colleagues at university in the law course, and it was really difficult for us um, having lectures online, always being behind the screen. I mean, even for me as a mature student, it was hard, let alone for the 18, 19 year olds who are just starting off their life. So yeah, mental health issues and also because it impacts other things like poverty, social isolation. Um, it, it impacts a whole load of other social issues within society. What did you learn about yourself over the course of the pandemic? Hmm, I learned that I like being outside much more than I thought. I mean, I, I love being at home. I love staying at home, but having to have to be inside and um, not being able to speak to people and communicate, I didn't realize the importance of it. So I think the fact that um, we had to stay inside and not be able to communicate with our friends face to face, I realized the importance of face to face contact. I mean, mobile messages, we kept that, but it's not the same. It just wasn't the same. So I think that was the thing I learned the most. Also, I think that how vulnerable I am and as a society and humans, I was really scared at the beginning. I, I admit it, I was. And now the war, I mean, we're not maybe as resilient as we would like or as, I don't know, strong or ever, you know, ever growing, sort of growing, growing, growing into technology, uh, digitalization. But yet we have this sort of in, uh, humane vulnerability. If you had to go for a beer with a member of the rival party, who would it be and what would you talk about? <laughs> I think it would be Miriam Dalli for two reasons. One, because she's a woman in politics and I think she's, 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 she's made it true as a woman. She's, she's a strong woman. So I think that would be an interesting conversation to have. I know she has children, so I would like to know how she's she's gotten through with it. And so that would be interesting from that aspect. But also um, it would be a good conversation to have in terms of her ministry, which is the energy ministry, which is something um, I, uh, I, I I look onto, I I like to discover, I like to, I would like to work on if, if, if I am elected to parliament. So that would be a very interesting conversation. I have a few proposals for her and things she might have been able to do different as well, but it would be a very interesting conversation. What has been your most memorable moment in politics so far? The whole experience has been memorable. I was telling you even before we started this that um, it's been such an eye opener. It's opened my eyes to a lot of realities. Um, if I had to say one specific moment, it would be not so, uh, it was still memorable, but not in a positive way. It was um, in a tard, uh, there was a small protest. Someone had called me down close to where I live and I was literally standing under a tree and they're cutting it down on me. And I'm seeing the tree coming down and I, I, all I could do was stand there and, and try to make a stance by just standing there. So that, that was something I definitely remember. What is your ultimate comfort food? 
<laughs> uh, anything carbs related, so pizza, pasta, um, uh, even uh, I think um, Arun. That's that's uh, I love my Maltese dishes. Anything to do with carbs, but again, so Arun, Kosksu. Um, I, I love the the. My mother still cooks quite traditionally, so I think I've kept to that. <laughs> Describe the last time you felt embarrassed and why. Oh. So I was in a in a at someone's home, and I asked to go to the bathroom, and there was a glass door, and I smashed my face, and I was so embarrassed. I literally just smashed my face against the glass, and uh, you know my nose ended up with. Yeah, it was embarrassing. <laughs> what do you think your eighteen year old self would think of you now? I don't think she would have expected this at all. My Ambitions were more on an academic level, so um, to study, to get a, a good job. I think she would be proud that I went out of my comfort zone and I'm trying to make a difference. Can you show us your screen time? Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's see. Okay. One hour, 39 minutes. How, how do you feel about that result? I don't know. What's other people's like? What have right. you seen? Gilbert, what's yours looking like? Gilbert is Rebecca's campaign manager. 14 hours. <laughs> Average though. <laughs> All right. So I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. And it, it's it's communicating. Oh, we have Google Maps there as well. Mm. Yeah, typical. Yeah. <laughs> Which foreign leader do you admire and why? Mm. She's not per se a leader. She's a congresswoman, a AOC. Uh, she's, she's done politics differently. Maybe I don't agree with her on, on everything, but she's done politics differently, and that's what I intend to do. I don't want politics to be uh, us and them. You know, it needs to be politics for the people, and AOC has really, really done that. She's done the Green New Deal um, recently, which I think was, was really good um, in terms of incentivizing um, uh, the environment and how we can promote the environment through jobs and, 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 and the such. So I think she's the one who I aspire to in terms of how I want to get to Parliament. So it's not about getting a vote. It's about being part of the people and AOC really does that. So your final question, why did you get into politics and why should young people do the same? The day they killed Daphne. I felt I needed to do something. Um, I had been an engineer behind the desk. I wasn't really voicing my opinion. I wasn't really making, I felt a change directly for the country because all professions make changes. But directly, I felt I needed to do something that day. Um, I, 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 I tried to do investigative journalism as much as I could. And I felt I was making a change. But what I started to realize was that if I really wanted to make a change, I needed to go to Parliament, because that is where the laws are made and that is where the decisions are taken. And that's how I, I said yes, finally. And it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Um, but I feel that youths should at least, not everyone wants or should become a politician, definitely not, but taking control of your life through politics, through understanding, through your vote, um, this affects your day to day life. It, it affects everything you do. Anything that, that, that is part of your life stems from politics. So I would say, away from the partisan politics, take an interest in politics, see what's going on around you because it affects you day to day. And that's where I think um, youths should really be a part of um, uh, everything they do within their own life.